roughly eight months ago, I uh, lost total appetite. Uh, couldn't eat anything, everything tasted of metal. Went to the doctors, they treated me for acid reflux for three months. After two months, I told them the tablets weren't working. And then knowing myself, I thought it was a bit more serious than what it was. So I requested uh, a camera to be put down my throat to inspect my stomach. So the appointment date came, the nurse actually undertook the, the task and was diagnosed there and then of uh, stomach cancer. What actually went through my mind when I was um, told I had cancer didn't really hit me for a, a few weeks because you tend to ignore it, they're going to be wrong, why me, what have I done wrong and so you tend, I tended not to actually think about it. Uh, the family put on a brave face but I know behind closed doors they were deeply upset, worried, so it's just quite, quite traumatic and then after sleepless nights, I actually sat and thought about it. Thought about my family, my wife, my sister, very close friends, my work bosses. It's not right to put them through all this worry and upset. So I decided to let nature take its course a lot faster than uh, with medication by refusing to eat, refusing medication, refusing treatment and Macmillan's introduced me to the hospice. When the word hospice was first mentioned, I put it to the old-fashioned hospice of dying people, people overnight coming to end of life as, as the terminology, and total wrong impression. impression. If it wasn't for the hospice, I, I, I don't think I would have been here now. I, I would have carried on. Uh, ending my life as quick as I could to um, take the pressure and the worry off people which was the wrong idea but I've learnt a lot it was a, a silly mistake but a lot learnt from it and if I can help people with what I went through to guide them through then I'd, I'd love to do that and help other people that's helped me The hospice gave me the will to live again, taught me companionship, trust, to learn about other, other people with life-threatening diseases and be able to discuss some of the problems that you face and come across where you don't really want to mention to your family because of any, any further upset that you cause and worry. So this actually takes a big piece a big weight off your shoulders being able to talk with with patients that are, at, um, are there with you. I'd like to give a very very special thanks to all of you that have uh, donated, raised money, given up your own precious time to make people like me with life-threatening diseases having the will to live again. It's more than appreciated. Well done and thank you and keep it up. Yeah.